Hi guys, it's Melissa from Starry Family Farm. Today I'm going to be reading for April 6th of the Bible in a Year Challenge. And that is going to come from Joshua 15 through 16, Ecclesiastes 5, 10 through 20, and John 11. So Joshua chapter 15. The land given to the tribe of Judah. The land assigned to the families of the tribe of Judah reached southward to the border of Adam, with the wilderness of Zin being its southernmost point. The southern boundary began at the south bay of the Dead Sea, ran south of Scorpion Pass into the wilderness of Zin, and went south to Kadesh Barnea to Hezron. Then it went up to Adar, where it turned toward Karka. From there it passed to Asmon until it finally reached the brook of Egypt, which it followed to the Mediterranean Sea. This was their southern boundary. The eastern boundary extended along the Dead Sea to the mouth of the Jordan River. The northern boundary began at the bay where the Jordan River empties into the Dead Sea, crossed to Beth Hogla, then proceeded north to Beth Araba to the stone of Bohan. Bohan was Reuben's son. From that point, it went through the valley of Achor to Debir, turning north toward Gilgal, which is across from the slopes of Adumman on the south side of the valley. From there, the border extended to the springs at En Shemesh and on to En Rogel. The boundary then passed to the valley of the son of Himmon along the southern slopes of the Jebusites, where the city of Jerusalem is located. Then it went west to the top of the mountain above the valley of Himmon and on up to the northern end of the valley of Rephaim. From there, the border extended from the top of the mountain to the spring at the waters of Nephtoah, and from there to the towns of Mount Ephron. Then it turned toward Bala, that is Kiriath Jerim. The border circled west of Bala to Mount Seir, passed along to the town of Kesselon, to the northern slope of Mount Jerim, and went down to Beth Shemesh and on to Timnah. The boundary line then proceeded to the slope of the hill north of Ekron, where it turned toward Shikaron and Mount Bala. It passed Jabneel and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. The western boundary was the shoreline of the Mediterranean Sea. These are the boundaries for the families of the tribe of Judah. The land given to Caleb. The Lord instructed Joshua to assign some of Judah's territory to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So Caleb was given the city of Arba, that is Hebron, which had been named after Anak's ancestor. Caleb drove, Caleb drove out the three Anakites, Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai, descendants of Anak. Then he fought against the people living in the town of Debir, formerly called Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the one who attacks and captures Kiriath Sefer. Othniel, the son of Caleb's brother Kenaz, was the one who conquered it, so Aksa became Othniel's wife. Then Aska married Othniel. When Aska married Othniel, she urged him to ask her father for an additional field. As she got down off her donkey, Caleb asked her, What is this? What can I do for you? She said, Give me a further blessing. You have been kind enough to give me land in the Negev. Please give me springs as well. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. The towns Judah inherited. This was the inheritance given to the families of the tribe of Judah. The towns of Judah situated along the borders of Adam in the extreme south are Kabzeel, Eder, Jagger, Kina, Demona, Ad Adada, Kadesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telem, Biloth, Hazor, Hadata, Kiriath, Hezron, that is Hazor, Amen, Sheman, Molada, Hazor, Gada, Heshman, Beth, Pelet, Hazor, Shual, Beersheba, Viziothiah, Bala, Eam, Ezem, Eltolad, Keset, Kessel, Korma, Ziklag, <laughs> Madmana, Sansana, Lebeoth, Shilhem, 
A.M. and Rumen. In all, there were 29 of these towns with their surrounding villages. <clears throat> the following towns situated in the western foothills were also given to Judah. Eshtaal, Zora, Ashna, Zenoa, En Ganim, Tapwa, Enam, Jarmuth, Adullam, Soko, Azeka, Shirim, Adithim, Gedera, and Jedrothim. In all, there were 14 towns with their surrounding villages. Also included were Zenin, Hadasha, Migdal Gad, Gil Dillian, Mizpeh, Jokthiel, Lakish, Bozkath, Eglon, Cabin, Lam Lamam, Kitlish, Gedaroth, Beth Dagon, Nama, and Maketa. Sixteen towns were with their surrounding villages. Besides these, there were Libna, Ether, Ashen, Ifta, Ashna, Nezib, Kila, Akzib, and Marisha. Nine towns of their surrounding villages. <clears throat> the territory of the tribe of Judah also included all the towns and villages of Ekron. From Ekron, the boundary extended west and included the towns near Ashdod with their surrounding villages. It also included Ashdod with its towns and villages and Gaza with its towns and villages as far as the brook of Egypt and along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Judah also received the following towns in the hill country. Shamir, Jatir, Soko, Dana, Kiriath, Sana, that is Debir, Anab, Eshtema, Anan, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo. Eleven towns of their surrounding villages. Also included were the towns of Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janim, Beth, Tapwa, Afaka, Humta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zior. Nine towns of their surrounding villages. Besides these, there were Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Jetta, Jezreel, Jokdim, Zanoa, Cain, Gibi, Gibeah, and Timna, ten towns of their surrounding villages. In addition, there were Halhol, Beth Zor, Gedor, Merath, Beth Anoth, and Eltikon, six towns of their surrounding villages. These were also, there were also Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath Jerim, and Rabbah, two towns of their surrounding villages. In the wilderness, these were the, there were the towns of Beth Araba, Midden, Sekaka, Nibshan, the city of Salt, and En Gedi, six towns of their surrounding villages. But the tribe of Judah could not drive out the Jebusites who lived in the city of Jerusalem, so the, Jebus the Jebusites lived there among the people of Judah to this day. Okay, and then chapter 16 the inheritance of Ephraim and West Manasseh. The allotment to the descendants of Joseph extended from the Jordan River near Jericho, east of the waters of Jericho, through the wilderness, and into the hill country of Bethel. From Bethel, that is Luz, it ran over to Adaroth in the territory of the Archites. Then it descended westward to the territory of the Japhletites, as far as lower Beth Haran, then to Gezer, and on over to the Mediterranean Sea. The land given to Ephraim. The families of Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, received their inheritance. The following territory was given to the families of the tribe of Ephraim as their inheritance. The eastern boundary of their inheritance began at Ataroth Adar. From there it ran to Upper Beth Haran, then on to the Mediterranean Sea. The northern boundary began at the Mediterranean, ran east past Mikmethath, then curved eastward past Tanith Shiloh to the east of Genoa. From Genoa, it turned southward to Adaroth and Nara, touched Jericho, and ended at the Jordan River. From Tapua, the border extended westward, following the Cana Ravine to the Mediterranean Sea. This is the inheritance given to the families of the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim was also given some towns with surrounding villages in the territory of the half-tribe of Manasseh. They did, they did not drive the Canaanites out of Gezer, however, so the people of Gezer live as slaves among the people of Ephraim to this day. And Ecclesiastes 5, 10 through 20. 5, 10 
Those who love money will never have enough. How absurd to think that wealth brings true happiness. The more you have, the more people come to help you spend it. So what is the advantage of wealth, except perhaps to watch it run through your fingers? People who work hard sleep well, whether they eat little or much, but the rich are always worrying and seldom get a good night's sleep. There is another serious problem I have seen in the world. Riches are sometimes hoarded to the harm of the saver, or they are put into risky investments that turn sour and everything is lost. In the end, there is nothing left to pass on to one's children. People who live only for wealth come to the end of their lives as naked and empty-handed as on the day they were born. And this, too, is a very serious problem. As people come into the world, so they depart. All their hard work is for nothing. They have been working for the wind, and everything will be swept away. Throughout their lives, they live under a cloud, frustrated, discouraged, and angry. Even so, I have noticed one thing, at least, that is good. It is good for people to eat well, drink a good glass of wine, and enjoy their work. Whatever they do under the sun, for however long... For whoever long God lets them live. And it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. To enjoy your work and accept your lot in life, that is indeed a gift from God. People who do this rarely look with sorrow on the past, for God has given them reasons for joy. And John 11, the death of Lazarus. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick, so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, the one you love is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God. I, the Son of God, will receive glory from this. Although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days and did not go to them. Finally, after two days, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea, to Judea again. But his disciples objected. Teacher, they said, only a few days ago, the Jewish leaders in Judea were trying to kill you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. As long as it is light, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of the world. Only at night is there danger of stumbling because there is no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, that means he is getting better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was having a good night's rest, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. Then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I wasn't there, because this will give you another opportunity to believe in me. Come, let's go see him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go to and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to pay their respects and console Martha and Mary on their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus... But Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, when everyone else rises on Resurrection Day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die like everyone else, will live again. They are given eternal life for believing in me and will never perish. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then he left him and returned. Then she left him and returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, The teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Now Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha had met him. When the people who were at the house trying to console Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing for her, Willing with her, he was moved with indignation and was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Why couldn't he keep Lazarus from dying? Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And again, Jesus was deeply troubled. Then they came to the grave. It was a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, said, Lord, by now the smell will be terrible because he has been dead for four days. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you will see God's glory if you believe? 
So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here, so they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus told them, Unwrap him and let him go. The plot to kill Jesus. Many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen. But some went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the leading priests and Pharisees called the high council together to discuss the situation. What are we going to do? They asked each other. This man certainly performs many miraculous signs. If we leave him alone, the whole nation will follow him, and then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temple and our nation. And and one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said, How can he be so stupid? Why should the whole nation be destroyed? Let this one man die for the people. This prophecy that Jesus should die for the entire nation came from Caiaphas in his position as high priest. He didn't think of it himself. He was inspired to say it. It was a prediction that Jesus' death would be not for Israel only, but for the gathering together of all the children of God scattered around the world. So from that time on, the Jewish leaders began to plot Jesus' death. As a result, Jesus stopped his, his public ministry among the people and left Jerusalem. He went to a place near the wilderness to the village of Ephraim and stayed there with his disciples. It was now almost time for the celebration of Passover. and Many people from the country arrived in Jerusalem several days early so they could go through the cleansing ceremony before the Passover began. They wanted to see Jesus, and as they walked, as they talked in the temple, they asked each other, What do you think? Will he come for the Passover? Meanwhile, the leading priests and Pharisees had publicly announced that anyone seeing Jesus must report him immediately so they could arrest him. That is all for today's reading. I will see you next time.